Hey traders, welcome to Shane from GMT Futures. What I want to do now is take you through our pyramiding strategy. So it's the way in which we pyramid into the trade. We're going to focus on the sell setup. So this is the second part of the reversal strategy, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy uh, enjoy this part of the strategy. All right, traders. So what we're going to look at now are the entry requirements. So the first thing we need to see is that the reversal trade is triggered. So we can't take a pyramiding setup unless we've had a reversal trade that's triggered. So we're short in a reversal. The other requirement is that we've had a minimum move has occurred. So you don't really want to take a pyramid trade if you've got, say, just a 5 or 10 pip move. You want to see at least a minimum of 20 pips or more. Now the third criteria is that we want resistance dots have printed. So we need to make sure that our resistance dots have printed. And then finally, we can enter the trade. So I'm going to take you through how that works uh, from a visual perspective and you'll see exactly uh, how we get into the trade and how we uh, we take our profit. Now, speaking of taking profit, I'm just going to walk you through now the the target options or the take profit options. So you, obviously you've got your trailing stop. So if you decide that the market's uh, moving really well and you want to trail your strategy, then you can do that with your trailing stops, which we've already which we've covered and we will cover it a little bit more detail as we go through the video. The other thing is you can work a fixed target on your automation or your strategy, so you can actually have a fixed uh, fixed profit point, or you can wait for a new print of support. So remember that we're trading uh, the sell setup and we're looking to pyramid short into the trade. So as you'll see from the examples that we're going to show you, once you have a support level print set up, then you can basically take profit at that level as well. So there's a few options there for you. and. And we'll go into a little bit more detail in the example now. Our entry price there was 132.15. So that's our entry there. And what we what we haven't covered yet is we haven't covered the fact that we've actually added pips, we've added lots along the way. So can we see here that remember that the the reversal strategy just isn't about taking the one trade, it's about compounding our our potential lot sizes or growing our or adding pyramiding to our potential position so anytime we get this resistance set up on a short or if you're tr trading the opposite way on a long you're looking for the support anytime we get this resistance print that is lower and has a minimum move on our initial trade then we're looking to add a lot size so what do I mean by that do you think we'd want to add a position to our current trade if we get a 10 pip move on our on our setup so for example if we move 10 pips so two full bricks or sorry uh, 20 pips in this instance is that going to be enough to add another position to this this trade like is 20 pips into the trade going to be enough to add another position or a lot size to this strategy or are, we going, or are we going to want to see a fairly good move, say 30, 40 pips, and then look to potentially pyramid into the trade? So see something more substantial, add another, add another lot size. So really, if you if you do see these, and you can set your strategy, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, you can set your strategy to basically uh, have the option of a minimum move on your trade before you start your pyramiding as we said on Monday. So that would be my preference. I want to see a minimum pip move before I start adding positions and fortunately for us this thing moves down. It doesn't set up a, an opportunity to pyramid into the trade until we get to here at which point you would add a lot size. Now there isn't at this stage a facility to once you get once your pyramiding is on and you're trading so basically once you get this resistance level set up and you've got your pyramiding set up as on on your strategy it will add another lot here so it'll go in with one lot but it'll also add a, add a second lot here so it'll go one lot here as well so basically if it, the only time it won't add a second lot is if this resistance setup is higher than the previous one on a short so so you're gonna you're going to be now we could potentially if we find that this is causing uh, 
causing a loss in, in overall uh, performance, then we can certainly add a function in there to, uh, to eliminate that. But at this stage, we've basically got that built in, so we'll need to objectively test that, won't we, to make sure that that, that still adds value and adds the edge that we're after. So as you can see here, we've got one lot in from the reversal. Our pyramids have got one, two lots in. As we go down, you've got, a, you've got another lot added there, so that's three lots. Uh, as we push down, we have another lot added here. So we have four lots in the trade. We have now this is based on the fact that you're not taking profit, you're actually just letting the positions run. So you're actually not just scaling out of the trade. So you do have the when you pyramid into a trade, you have two options. You can either take profit as a de, at a designated value, which is basically either your support resistance, or you can use one of the trailing stops or you can use the moving average stop. So with the pyramiding strategy, you have all of these options here. So you can do any, any number of these options, or you can use the moving average. So that's what you're objectively testing. You're objectively testing what is your, what's, your, what's going to give you the most money, but also, too, what is, what's the, the style in which you want to run this system. So as we as we adding lots to this uh, this example, you'll see that um, we're adding another lot here, and then adding a, another lot there, and eventually we're adding another lot here, adding another lot here. So we're just adding lots as as price moves down. Still, we're making a lower low or a, or a price or our resistance sets up at the same value. So we're adding another lot there. And then this is where this is where it may prove to be uh, to be worthwhile. Just perhaps having a filter in there that if we get perhaps three, uh, perhaps two levels that are con consecutive levels that we stop adding lot sizes because you can see we added another lot there and and basically uh, that's these two lots here they're both going to be losers as this one will as well. So. Just thinking out loud here, it may be uh, it may be worthwhile, or it will be worthwhile, adding that uh, filter to uh, to allow us to turn off that that second lot added once we get a a matching resistance level. But we'll need to test that up. That'll need to be objectively tested so we can run the numbers on that as well. So. Go